Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of the Elvati Sphere and welcome our special guest for today, Vicky from The Agonist. Hello Vicky, thank you so much for joining us. Hello, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, so awesome. Thank you so much. How are you doing today? I'm good. I woke up about an hour ago. <laughs> I'm still drinking coffee and yeah, sometimes I'm jealous. I wish yeah, I were yeah. in Europe because all the all the events and everything you guys do are at nighttime. And in North America, everything's in the daytime, and I'm just like, uh... Ah, <laughs> uh, I see. In, in what time zone are you in? Where are you? Um... Uh, I'm in Central Time. It's not morning. It's 1 p.m., but I always wake up afternoon hours, so it's it's partially my fault, too. Ah, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, I see you are a night owl or something like yes. that, right? <laughs> then... Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm up okay. until, like, 3 or 4 in the morning, so... Yeah. <laughs> really? Okay, yeah. okay. So is this like is this your creative hour then or do you feel most <sighs> awake then or yeah? Yeah, definitely. Um I think I just do everything better at nighttime. Like I, I sing better, yeah. I yeah. think better, I work out better, I just do everything <laughs> better at nighttime. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> everything by night time. Wow, then we have a total different um, sleeping rhythm. I actually just changed it a month ago. I thought, okay, I will try it out. And I get up at 6.37 every day now. <gasps> and, oh my uh, God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but of course, then I need to go to sleep earlier. And that's sometimes really tough, but uh, giving it yeah. all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, not always so easy, um, but uh, yeah. Well, well, well. So, what are you doing, Vicky, during this Corona time? Are you guys working on anything for the Agonist, or what's up there? Yeah, uh, we wrote a few songs. Um, I'm actually going to Canada in May to record. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, it's been really difficult with like the restrictions and. Mm-hmm. Even now, you know, going to Canada, it, I like I'm next door, but mm-hmm. um, I mm-hmm. see like the the laws and the regulations online and like what you need, like paperwork and requirements and what you have to do after crossing the border. And like, I'm a little bit scared um, that they might just okay. be like, oh, no, you're not coming in. But um, yeah, I yeah. think I think it'll be OK, because thankfully, recording music and yeah. um yeah. Filming videos and stuff like that, they're considered essential jobs. So yeah. I think with the right paperwork, it'll be okay. <laughs> uh, do you do you need to fly usually or you can actually just go by car or I am gonna drive just because yeah. it seems like it's a bit easier to do. Uh, mm-hmm. with flying, you know, also you're you're around a lot of people and I think they require heavier quarantine afterwards when you fly through um, uh. into the country. Yes, yes, yeah. okay. Oh, I see. So you actually want to go soon? Uh, it's in the plan to go and record some more or? Yeah, so it's in, in three weeks. I'll ah. be leaving. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Hey, super cool. So can you tell us a little bit more? Is it like uh, <laughs> a few songs or is it an album? Uh, or? Okay, yeah. So it's an EP, actually. I think mm-hmm. five songs. Um, just because we felt that you know, Orphans came out in tw- late 2019 mm-hmm. and we did one tour and then the pandemic happened. So we felt like well, this music is still, you know, new to us uh, mm-hmm. relatively. Well, not to us, to the world, you know. Yeah. So we felt it might not be the best to release another full album. Um, mm-hmm. At least that's how I felt. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think the guys agreed too because it's like we didn't really have the chance to, to really tour that album. So I think with an EP... It still keeps it fresh so that if we have shows, we can mix songs we can put from the EP and from Orphans and just kind of not throw Orphans away and be like, we're not playing those songs live anymore. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. They they need some time on stage as well. (laughs) It's important. Yeah, Yeah. when was your last tour? Was it the one with Ginger? I read something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the last full tour was that in um, November, December. 
2019, yeah. 2019, so far away, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It feels so close, but so far away at the same time. Yes. Ah. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, now it's just a little bit different focus, right? I mean, now you can write songs again. You're more at home. I mean, uh, I see a lot from you on Twitch and you are super active. You really started a lot in 2020, also with your own <laughs> projects, right? I was reading a little yeah. bit. I was like, this woman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it was just an, ex like an excuse. It wasn't, these weren't all ideas that I came up with last year. I, I had them in my head for a while and mm -hmm. obviously being on the road and traveling, like the band isn't, I'm in Chicago and they're in Montreal. So we're not located in the same city, yeah. which means that whenever we have plans, I have to leave my environment yeah. and go over there. Mm -hmm. So I often, often that was like, the reason for me not doing more because I felt like, well, I can't start something now if I have to leave in two weeks, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I get it. Then you're always out of your environment, out of your creative zone at home. And uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, time is rare and some things, I guess, really take some time to actually start or daring to start and, and so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, But your Twitch, you do this for a long time already, or no? It's actually oh. just been uh, three months now. Well, I started this year, so the beginning January, so f four months ish. Wow. Okay, yeah. okay, because yeah. from what I've seen, your Zoom ad, ah, uh, sorry, Twint, uh, no, <laughs> Twitch, uh, all. I tell you, all these apps and platforms, they freak me out sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Twitch. Hey, there's always more. There's yeah. more, um, th like Discord and so on. There's always more and more. I'm super confused, but Twitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I heard about that you were rapping and so on and things like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so that, like Twitch, I wanted to do it for a while, but it, it can be... It's, it's launching a new platform, basically. Like, it doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. It's it's not like you're taking your following that's, like, on Facebook or Instagram and introducing something to them. It's like, no, you're building a whole new following. Mm -hmm. And you know how it is. You could have, let's say, 30,000 followers. You post something. Not all 30,000 are going to see it or care mm -hmm. about it. So mm -hmm. every time you post... It's like, okay, I'm slowly bringing more and more people here, mm -hmm. but it really just feels like starting from scratch. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, so I was a little bit, you know, iffy about that. And I think that's the reason I didn't start right away because it's a very interactive platform. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. the main appeal is that there's people in the chat room and you're talking to them mm -hmm. and having fun and all that. So I'm like, well, I don't want to start this and there's only five people there and what yeah. am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> You know? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, I guess it can a little bit be scary. How was how was your first Twitch uh, stream? How was it? For it was more than good. five people. Come on. Yeah, yeah. No, there were there were there were like fifty people. So yeah. So then, come on, it's a party. It's yeah. already a party. Yeah. No, it's it's good at this point. Like I feel like there's a consistent group of people that are there, especially like my Patreons. Um, mm -hmm. So it's good because I know I could just turn on my camera even on a day that I don't feel good and I don't feel like doing it. And the mm -hmm. chat room will be like uplifting and motivating. And then yeah. after the end of a stream, I'll, I'll feel a lot better. Yeah. So because I think there's there's a lot of stress with social media sometimes that you have to put on a face and be on, in a good mood because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's what fans are expecting of you, you know, mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. But it's nice to have your environment that can just be like, oh, Vicky isn't feeling good today. It's okay. You know, let's cheer her up, you know. <laughs> so so it also gives you energy sometimes and the good yes. mood. And yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Because oh I heard you do, it, you do it twice a week, like every mm -hmm. Tuesday, every Thursday. If you feel yeah. good or not, you go for it, right? Yeah, uh -huh. unless... A life or death situation, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Wow. Okay, this yeah. is super cool. And do you prepare for it or you go with the flow, like seeing what people want or? <laughs> uh, for the most part, I prepare. And by prepare, I mean like 
30 minutes before the stream. <laughs> ah! <laughs> um, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I, so, so an idea that came organically after like maybe two months of being on Twitch, I, I was telling people to like give me suggestions of songs to practice. Mm-hmm. And it just it became really overwhelming because people were suggesting things during the stream. And that can take time because you're like, okay, let me look up this song. Let me see if I know it, if I can do it on the spot. You know, that takes some time. So I said, you know, maybe we need a little bit of a structure. And what I did, I made um, a channel on my Patreon where if someone's a patron, they can go and suggest songs for me. And then I can look at them up, look them up in advance and just like... Not learn the song in advance, but just have an idea, you know, like, yeah. let's, you know, not not completely thrown into the water and like, what is this song? I'm hearing it for the first time, you know. Yeah, of course. And then how do you do it? I mean, you need to get the chords or you do a da cappella and you scream or you sing or I don't know, you you take your dog and you do something <laughs> with him or... <laughs> That's happened too. Um, <laughs> but no, I try and find instrumentals online for the most part. Uh. Yeah. Uh, especially if it's an aggressive song, because like yeah, you yeah. know, you, you can't be screaming to a piano. I mean, I guess you can, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so yeah, I try and cho- I choose songs where I can find a pretty nice instrumental. And what I'll do, I'll um, if it's an individual that created it on YouTube, I will mm-hmm. give them credit and I'll I'll leave a comment on their link and like send whoever's watching the stream over there to give them feedback. You know, and mm-hmm. I think it's super cool because that way, like you're promoting other people's work as well yeah yeah this is actually super cool okay hey yeah. actually i have to say i never really attended any twitch stream really so uh i'm okay. not really familiar with this <laughs> platform yet it's but, okay uh, but it sounds super uh entertaining actually and i yeah. guess it's I heard it's huge also for gaming. I heard uh, Christina Scapia, for example, I think she's gaming a lot on this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Twitch primarily is for gaming. That's how it started. That's mm-hmm. the big appeal. It's for gamers. But then music started sort of seeping in there a little bit, and there mm-hmm. are a few musicians, uh, notable musicians in metal, that have a really big following on Twitch, like... Uh, Matt Heafy from Tri- Trivia or Herman Lee from Dragon Force and and uh, Mike Shinoda from Linkin Park. So like they're they're all people oh. I follow. Um, so oh. they do primarily music, some some gaming too, but but um, they just stream music. So it'll be like them either practicing or writing a song or whatever. And I think that that also helped smaller musicians be like, hey, I want to do this too, you know. Mm -hmm. So music is growing on Twitch. It might not be as big as gaming, but, you know, it's growing. It's growing. Yeah. Do you also (laughs) follow some gamers there? No. No. I mean, I would, I would, but how much time is there in a day, you know? I I just can't. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Oh, yes. Oh, man. Well, talking about time and so on, what are you, like, have you found a new like corona hobby or something like that you know when, where you actually finally have time for not only twitch but maybe something else <laughs> um no unfortunately i think i just like i i dove into music so much you know and mm. and all different platforms like you said and it can be a little bit overwhelming at times yeah. Um, because I have Twitch and then I have Patreon and then I have occasional YouTube covers that I do and yeah. and yeah. filming yeah. and editing videos and yeah. uh, vocal lessons and it's just, it's a yeah. lot. <laughs> oh, it's a lot. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It sounds like a lot. Yeah, I mean, you also do like these covers and pretty often, right? I mean, this is so much work as well. Yeah, it it can be a lot of work. I would say Mm -hmm. the work is actually not in the singing itself, not in the Mm -hmm. recording. It's it's after. So like editing, mixing the song, filming a video, editing the video, posting it like that's what takes a lot of time. I I think I think you can agree on this, too, that like actually singing a song takes not a lot of time at all. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For for it. I just recently started doing some covers and actually I was also like, well, I'm lucky somebody recorded me because I think if I would need to do it all alone, I I will do it in the future. I need to learn it (laughs) like, you know, but, but alone is like, it's never 
good enough and yeah. I would just always record it again and again and again and it's awesome to have somebody like Fabi it's okay we go on now it's like okay yeah. next part <laughs> yes yes no you're you're right about that for sure <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 oh this is this is crazy and then I, I mean do you do your videos you edit them yourself or you help or how is it the process I, there I do it myself <laughs> wow and yeah so it's a lot of work and yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. you can't actually see it because uh, my camera's like that way. But I film my videos there in the back. There's just like a black sheet on the wall and that's it. Ah. And it's it's very tight and very restricting. But um, it's funny because like sometimes people ask me like, hey, uh, where did you go to film your videos? Like what studio <laughs> or whatever? And I'm like, um, corner. my basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, this is actually super practical. And then, I mean, you make a lot of collaborations, right? So actually, then if everybody is behind a black screen or a background in front of a black background, <laughs> yeah. then everything looks similar. So it's uh, actually a very good idea. Yeah, it's it's easier to edit for sure. Um, it can be a little bit tricky sometimes because not everyone uses the same camera, not everyone has the same lights. And, and there I am like going crazy trying to color match because... One person's blue wasn't the same as another person's blue. And uh, 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 that's where the thing you were saying <laughs> kicks in, where you just have to be like, it's good enough, you know, let it be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you will never like let it go and post it, right? Because you can yes. always, I mean, it's not only with music, it's only, I guess, also with filming and everything. It could always go a little bit further, but let yeah. it go at some yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to, you have to. And then you just like, you take whatever negative thing you saw and you keep that in mind for the next time, you know, and your work gets better and better. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is true. I guess, I mean, do you have sometimes similar musicians as well, right? Uh, you do sometimes yeah. with the same guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like once you have a routine and you yeah. know each other on a friendship yeah. basis too, it's just so easy to work. Yeah, Like, I feel like the hurdle is always the first couple of songs that you do with someone, especially when it comes to mixing. Because um, like... Yeah. Like mix, let's, for example, just something simple, mixing my voice. Um, if someone's working with me the first time, they might not know how I like it. Um, or they might not know, like, how to to mix, like, my microphone, my voice into that microphone. Whereas, like, the second and the third song that we do, it's like, oh, I already know how to, mm -hmm. how to work with this person, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's always easy working with the same people over and over again. Yeah. Obviously, I, I do want to work with more people and, you know, have more collaborations. But when you have your environment and usually people just come to me and they're like, hey, how do you feel about doing this song? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Whatever. Like, I have a hard time saying no. <laughs> <laughs> so then it's just like, oh, OK, so I have this song to do with you and that song to do with you. And mm -hmm. It's it's time again. It, it comes down to time, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, okay. This everything sounds super, super busy. Uh, <laughs> how do you how do you cope with that? Do you have anything else related in your life without music besides the dogs? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have my family, my husband, my dogs. You know, I uh, mm -hmm. I work out sometimes. That's great, actually, just because because a lot of this work is sitting here staring yeah. at a screen yeah so yeah when I stand up I'm like okay let me go yeah. let me go for a walk let me lift some weights you know and then my body feels a lot better and my brain yeah. feels a lot better when I do that so it yeah. definitely helps yeah yeah super important super important to have something else especially also like moving your body I can also I sometimes I'm like Am I a musician? I'm just in front of the computer all the time. I guess right. everybody can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it's like a blessing and a curse. It's mostly a blessing, but you have to make sure you don't fall into that trap where you're actually harming yourself by overdoing it, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. But it's perfect that you have two dogs. I mean, then it means you need to go for a walk. You need to go exactly. to the fresh air and the sun and so on. How's the yeah. weather now, by the way? Is it already warm as well? 
It what? depends on the day. Uh, Today yeah. is super bright and super nice. So, like, after our chat, I'm going to go for, for a nice walk, and I think it'll be uh, pleasant. <laughs> oh, super cool. Oh, do you have hard winters? or? Yes. Yes. Yes, you do. Okay. Yeah. A lot of snow. A lot of snow. A lot of slow, um, negative temperatures, you know. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Okay, oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love hard winters. It's cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very refreshing. How how uh, do your dog cope with that, with the cold? Um, yeah, well, one of my dogs is a husky, so he yeah. loves the cold, you know. And But there's the smaller one, o Oreo. Yeah, Oreo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he doesn't really care... He's, 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 at this point, he's become kind of like a cat. Like, he just goes out to do his business and then just barks at people and comes back in. He doesn't <laughs> care too much. Doesn't care too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, do they get along well? I mean, they seem very different, like, looking-wise. Yeah. I don't know, character-wise. <laughs> They're complete opposites, character-wise. Um... I would say they tolerate each other. They don't necessarily play with each other too much, maybe because of the size difference, you know. It's mm -hmm. hard. One is like this and the other one's like that, you know. So yeah. it's hard for them to play with each other. But mm -hmm. I I find there are moments of, like, affection that I'm, like, surprised sometimes. I'm like, oh, you guys look close. This is a shocker, Aww. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Almost cuddling a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they get a little too close and I'm like, ah, oh, what's ah. happening here? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, suspicious. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. uh, how, how, um, how come that you have two such different dogs? How, are they also the same age or how is that? Uh, they're, they're pretty close in age, but it's really circumstantial. Um, so we got Oreo first from some friends that just have tons of Pomeranians. They, they breed Pomeranians. Uh -huh. And um, we were mm -hmm. staying with them when they had a fresh, you know, batch of puppies. <laughs> yeah. And um, no one had, had taken Oreo yet. So we just saw him and he was just this little fur ball of energy. And we're like, oh, you know. <laughs> and since they were friends, they just gave him t to us, you know, like we didn't pay or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. because I'm not the type of person to also pay for, for a pet when there's like mm -hmm. shelters and rescues and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah. it was really circumstantial. I, we weren't planning on it. We just saw uh, him and fell in love, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Who can resist us? Uh, yeah. These yeah. eyes probably. I can only imagine the puppy. <laughs> yes yeah. he's he's a master at the puppy eyes that's oh. for sure <laughs> yeah and then ghost is actually a rescue uh we found him i want to say mm -hmm. two or th two to three years after having oreo and um oh. we found him on the street we took him in you know we asked around to see if we could find his owners nobody claimed him and then we were just like, well, he's so beautiful. Let's just keep him. <laughs> and oh, really? Seriously? He was just on the street? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if he ran away or if whoever had him let him go. Like, I don't know the story, to be honest. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. And we took him to the vet and they gave us his, like, approximate age from his teeth. So yeah. we don't know exactly, but he... Mm -hmm. uh, we think he's like a year younger than Oreo. So they're about the same, you know. About the same. So about what age? Uh, okay, so Oreo's getting close to five right now. Wow. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yep. uh -huh. so Ghost is around four. Wow, okay. So they still have a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just still hard to believe, though, because, like, to me, I'm just like, well, I just got Oreo last year, and it's like, no... It's been five no. years. Time runs. Time runs. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah how absolutely. Was it when, you know, when you were on tour for several weeks, do you miss them? Like, I can imagine uh, yeah. when you always have them around and then suddenly, yeah. 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 I, I definitely do. Oh. Um, I think, though, it is easier for me to cope with it than it is for them because dogs are very, very mm -hmm. emotionally attached to their humans, you know, so I notice yeah. a pattern whenever I leave or my husband leaves. They're a bit moody for a few days. They're always staring yeah. at the door. You know, every little sound sets them off. Yeah. And 
And you see it when you come back, like, especially like, well, dogs, like you could be gone for two minutes and they freak out. But even when it's like (laughs) two months and you come back, they just like jump on me and like they will not let me go. So, (laughs) yeah. Oh, wow. What was the longest uh, time frame that you were away from them? Like a few months or? I'd say like two to three months, probably three three months. months. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's a lot three for them tour. especially <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you know the um, thing is you know yeah. when you come back but they don't know when you come back that's <laughs> exactly yeah yeah of course yeah was it a three months tour or like combination of different tours and everything and um yeah i would say it's like a comp not i've never done a three full month tour um Mm -hmm. it would be like Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. a month and a half or two months of touring combined with the added practice sessions before Mm -hmm. so going a little bit earlier to montreal or maybe sometimes because i don't live there we're like uh we film our music videos around a tour you know so it adds it adds up (laughs) yeah 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 it adds up oi oi yeah i can imagine (laughs) well yeah talking about music again I mean, I was super excited when you said that uh, we are going to do this talk because I'm a really huge fan of your vocals and <laughs> I want to know how Thank do you do it. How did you learn it? How did you get into the screaming? Did you start as a clean singer? Yeah, sorry. So many questions, but it's yeah. really cool. <laughs> No, it's, no, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I've been, I've been singing my whole life, so that's not anything... There's no big story there, you know. I was just one of those kids that could sing on key. So my teachers Mm -hmm. would, you know, give me parts in choirs and plays and stuff like that where they're just Mm -hmm. like, here, you sing this because, you know, you're just on key and that's it. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, singing was just one of those things that was always in my life. And then I think, you know, I didn't consider it professionally until I heard metal and rock music, um, that's what made it sort of like, okay, it's not a hobby anymore. It's not me just singing in my shower. It's like, no, I legitimately want to be in a band and write my own music and, and all that. When I was like, I'd say like 15 or 16 and I like started listening to, to heavier music. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And then it's just, from then on, I would say it's just circumstantial, I guess. Like, Mm -hmm. it was Mm -hmm. just, I listened to a lot of different things, metal and non-metal. And I've always just had that curiosity to different vocal styles. Like, how does so-and-so do this? Or how how are the vocals in this genre done? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily Mm -hmm. a specific singer, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And then I was just like, it was always just a challenge for me. Like, can I do this? Can I learn how to do this? You know, Mm -hmm. and by doing covers and stuff like that and just pushing myself. And Mm -hmm. that's that's how screaming came into the picture, too. So like after a few different singing styles, I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, maybe try some screaming, you know. So, yeah, just Uh, all a curiosity. (laughs) And uh, I mean, I mean, especially the screaming, did it come just by learning by doing or did you take some lessons from somebody or maybe some tutorials on YouTube or do you have any tips maybe also people yeah. are listening that want to start to scream but don't really know and I mean like being afraid of damaging the vocal cords and so on what do you think about this um so I didn't really have like lessons lessons um when I was starting out I just I trial and error. I just tried doing different sounds <laughs> and um, admittedly, it wasn't the greatest to begin with. I don't think anyone that, that first starts screaming right mm-hmm. off the bat gets it, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, I think you're going to make some mistakes. Um, the, I guess, benefit that I had was that I was already singing, so I already knew a few things about vocals. Like I knew how to use my diaphragm. I knew that drinking water is important as as stupid as it might sound. It's, it it is, you know? (laughs) Yeah. So like breathing, placing your voice, all that stuff. It wasn't news to me. So, um, it was mostly, I would say every vocal style that I've learned how to do is through imitation. 
And when I say imitation, it's just really hearing it with my ear and just kind of trying to decipher what that person is doing. And then I try and I do it with my own voice. I don't yeah. try and copy what like their tone or their inflection or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I just try and copy their technique. Um, okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is, oh. I think, the the right thing to do. You don't want to sound like anyone else. You don't want to sound like you're imitating someone. So mm-hmm. that's how I learn. And I think when it comes to screaming, my advice would be try it out for yourself to start with. Um, do some exper- experimentation, maybe look up some YouTube tutorials. Some are helpful, some aren't. Like, I did that, too. I looked up some YouTube stuff, and I was mm-hmm. like, well, this doesn't really help at all, oh. you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. mm-hmm. But I think now, because this was years ago, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there wasn't mm-hmm. as much information online. I think now yeah. you can yeah. find some, some really good tutorials yeah. online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think maybe the most known one is like Melissa Cross and so on like she teaches a lot I think it's called Fry Fry Screams I heard that she has a lot of students also in the metal scene obviously yeah Um, yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I've not taken lessons from her but of course like you know testimonials so like if you have professional screamers that sound amazing um vouch for it obviously it's good um yeah yeah. So, yeah, I think, you know, mm-hmm. she does have her course that's free to start with, like the Zen yeah. of Screaming stuff. So, like, I think that's a good starting point if you're getting into it. And then if you see that you're limited, and I, I say this for anything, for any instrument, like, do the research yourself, try out stuff for yourself. If you feel that you're hitting a, a point where you're not learning anymore or you're not progressing anymore, or maybe you're feeling like, your vocals are hurting you or whatever. So you're Mm -hmm. concerned that you're doing something wrong, then reach out for a vocal teacher. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Makes absolute sense. Um, Did you, did you ever have like uh, vocal problems or so from the screaming or, uh, you know, like when it's live and when you're uh, longer on tour, I mean, maybe catching a cold. I mean, I know that as well. Singing and then catching a cold and then you have to sing and it's just, it is really like a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I mm-hmm. I definitely did the first couple of years uh, when I was in The Agonist too. Mm-hmm. It's also, I didn't have that that time period where, like I said, when you first start screaming or, or doing vocals in general, maybe yeah. you're not the best. Most people aren't the best. But the difference with me is that I didn't have that grace period where I just sucked and I could just practice in my basement and no one could hear me <laughs> until I got better. You know, yeah. I, I was only doing it for six months before I joined the band. So there was no. Yeah, yeah. There was no take your time and get better. No, yeah, no. <laughs> Wow, yeah. six, wait, also, again, you started screaming six months before you actually joined The Agonist. Yeah, yeah. And they discovered you via YouTube or, yeah, uh, yeah. the covers that you did. So basically, exactly. so you yeah. went full force, you, you learned screaming with doing the covers, like you said, by imitating, also, in a way, and then making it yours, like listening, yeah. make it yours. And yeah. Yeah, and and, and admittedly, there. like, my screaming was not that good back then. It was nowhere near to where it is today. Mm-hmm. But I think the band took a chance with me because because of my singing. Um, because that was really what did it. Um, they liked my singing voice so much mm-hmm. and the variety mm-hmm. that I have in my singing so that they were like, okay, she's only been screaming for six months. They mm-hmm. were confident that I would get better yeah. in time. <laughs> And <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. um, but that mm-hmm. being said, so I, I, my first tours with them were, were a bit stressful also because the old material is not easy in terms of maybe each part individually is easy, but, um, the way the songs were written there, there's no really, there's no space mm-hmm. on the music. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of parts where, okay, the vocals stop. And there's a nice instrumental section. Yeah. <laughs> no, they they were written in a way where there's vocals everywhere yeah. to the point where, like, it's it's not only difficult live, 
to do that. It's also, it's, in my opinion, of course, it's also like um, not the best choice from a musical standpoint. Because, like, when you're in the crowd and you're watching a show, I think you want to see those instrumental sections. You want to see the singer just have a moment to just headbang and have fun with the band. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you don't mm -hmm. want to see a vocalist that's in the front always, like, blabbing away, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So that got a bit better with time because, like, we, we wrote more songs mm -hmm. and we had a variety of old songs and new songs and yeah. we were able to create a set that sort of flows where it's like, okay, this part of the set is vocal heavy and I have to just stand and perform. Mm -hmm. But then this part of the set, I can let loose and just like relax a little bit with the band and have fun with it. And this is something that, you know, I'm not just saying it's like feedback from fans and other people as well. So mm -hmm. yes, but, but the first year or two uh, were, were, yes, mm -hmm. yes, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And of course, I mean, you grow into everything. Like when you join the band, I mean, you need to grow into your role and everything and like de developing your screams and everything. Um, when I, I just checked it out, I think, was it in June 2020? Orphans, the, the video that you... Uh, yeah, the last released. video we put out. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I just... I, I listened to it and was like, wow, there's like literally one part, like super low, gro like growth or however you would say it. And then some higher screams and then some angelic, clean voice. And I was like, okay, pulling <laughs> this off. Like, wow, this is, yeah, super, super yeah. impressive, actually. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, yeah. So for that song, actually, I think the, the low, low growl is our bassist. Um, mm hmm I, the, for the song that you're talking oh, about. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just because like we wanted a different color of voice there. So he oh, does some, mm -hmm. some screams, mm -hmm. but, but there are parts like that, that you like on other songs where mm -hmm. it does jump around, you know, and you mm -hmm. could go from like a really low placement to like a really high pitched singing note, you know, right after. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I try mm -hmm. to not overdo that sometimes mm -hmm. because like you, when you write music, you have to think of the live perspective too like can I do this live yeah. um but yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. you get carried away because because the music is just so intense that you're like I'm gonna do it anyways and I'll figure out how to do it live afterwards <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's oh god I noticed too in the studio yeah 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 let's take one higher let's go as high as possible like okay singing it live oh why but you yeah know. <laughs> yeah no i know we we yeah. tend to do that i think all musicians that that take themselves themselves seriously tend to like <laughs> make their job a little bit more harder than it needs to be so of course but this is also how we grow i would say right <laughs> yeah yeah and i think it's mm -hmm. it's super awesome too and then let's say when you had a difficult vocal moment when you first wrote it and then you just mm -hmm got used to it so much or practiced so much that like it becomes easy and I think you can just be proud and be like look this this used to give me such a hard time but now now it's cool you know now it's cool yeah, yeah yeah I mean also it's all muscles right muscle memory mm -hmm. and muscle training uh the more you do it the better the better you get uh basically yeah yeah, yeah. for yeah, sure for yeah. sure how is it? Uh, um, I I don't I don't scream. So, um, uh, but uh, I, I think it's super super cool actually. And the more we talk about it, the more I get like. Mm. <laughs> but uh, you I should want try to try it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but I, I I wanted to ask you something. How is it um, when you scream? Do you have like do you think of a pitch or can you add more like clean voice to it and less like can you adjust this? Yeah. effect or how does this work yeah i think it depends on everyone's uh, screaming technique because there are different kinds of screaming techniques i would mm -hmm. say after like carefully analyzing my voice and my technique i do use a very hybrid technique if it, mm -hmm. like like for example people ask me like do you do fry screams or do you do false chord screams and my answer is always like well both because it really depends on the part. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to get too, too technical because like you, you like you said, you don't scream and you probably don't know what this is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't want to mm -hmm. get too confusing here. But um, 
basically uh-huh. a false chord scream is it's it's created with your false chords not your real vocal mm-hmm. chords blah 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 and when you do a pure false chord scream it doesn't have your voice in it it's just like pure okay. distortion um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's kind of like I would say like the pure false chord screams are the very old school style of screaming. Um, uh, is it, it that's rather low or can you also? It can be high. It, it can okay. be high as well. So like the okay. pitch is there, the pitch mm-hmm. is there, but your voice isn't there. So like, you, you know, you know how you like, let's say like metal core, for example, and is a genre where, where people are screaming, but you hear their voice in the scream. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, that yes, would, yes, yes. You get that? Yeah, so that's not a pure false chord scream. Because a yeah. pure false chord scream, it doesn't have your voice in it. It's just like mm-hmm. really the distortion on different pitch levels. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So whereas a fry scream is like the super safe, conservative way of screaming, but there's not a lot of body in it. And there's not it's a lot of... It's rather quiet, um, isn't it? Yes. The, the yeah. pure fry scream mm-hmm. is very, very quiet. That's why I don't I don't do just that because like I think in a live setting, especially when my singing is so loud, how mm-hmm. would I think I would give like the the guy that's mixing our set I would give him a really hard time. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Always up and down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. I guess uh, when you sing, you go full force, chest voice, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that yeah. is that is loud. <laughs> it's it's really loud, especially. I think my head voice is reasonable, but especially my chest voice, its natural volume is just ridiculously loud. Um, It's actually like a struggle for me to soften my chest voice. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. But anyways, um, (laughs) my point is with with screaming, like, yeah, I have a hard time explaining my exact technique because it is so hybrid depending on the the sound that I want to go for. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But the thing you're talking about where you you add your voice a little bit to the scream, Mm -hmm. that can be one of the most damaging vocal techniques, you know, because you're technically Mm -hmm. not supposed to do it. Um, I don't really care for what you're supposed to or not supposed to do. Like if it fits Mm -hmm. the part, if it's like a really emotional moment and you want to have that, like Mm -hmm. your voice in the scream, you should add it, of course. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. you need to be considerate. You need to like balance things out. So like pick and choose your moments in the song where you mm-hmm. want to have that intensity. Don't do it yeah. everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't do it everywhere and ma- small parts. And then they seem very emotional then as well. I mean, they stick out then, I guess. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's all about dynamics. Like, would you want to yeah. hear a song that's like in, in terms of singing, that's always in a high register? I don't think so. Like, I think you would be amazed no. by a singer, like, belting a high note if they were previously in a more mid-range yeah. situation, yeah. you know. Definitely, definitely. You gotta have a climax at some point, but not always. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 this is totally true. And this is very interesting. Super, super cool. So I'm very impressed that you said you started half a year before joining a band with screaming. This is insane, yeah. actually. Yeah. This is... Uh, <laughs> A huge step. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Crazy. It, it's one of those moments where you look back and you're like, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. You but know? it was the best decision in your life. I mean, right? Yeah, is, yeah. Ab- absolutely. Because like, I think absolutely. it's, it's not just me being in the agonist. It's just, I feel like life, there's so many different paths that you can take. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you have to go down one specific path for other things to happen. Yeah. yeah. So like, my life would be extremely different had I not joined yeah. the agonist yeah. in so many ways, not just because of that, but like I'd probably still be living in Greece or maybe I'd be here in Chicago. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe I wouldn't be screaming at all. Maybe I would have just yeah. like tried it out and been like, yeah, I don't care for it. Let me just sing. You know, maybe yeah. I'd be doing different. Maybe I would stop doing music entirely. Like, who knows? Yeah, yeah. Who knows? You know, yeah, that's true. Ah, so did you. Uh, move from Greece just also for the band or or for I private was, reasons or uh, no uh, I was thinking about doing it for a while just because I felt like there was no real future for me in Greece um, in terms of music um, metal music at least like I felt like mm-hmm. 
there's money in other genres there, um, mm-hmm. more traditional mm-hmm. music mm-hmm. Um, and dance music. <laughs> and yeah. I didn't want to do that because, like, I think it's not just about the the like okay i'm in music i'm doing music but if you're doing a genre of music or something in music that you don't like then it's just as bad as a day job you know what's the difference between me working in an office space or me singing a genre of music that i despise if they're just Mm -hmm. both bad right Mm -hmm. okay i see your point singing is still better though but (laughs) yes yes for sure Um, but so, so I felt like I didn't really have a future there. I, I have some friends and bands in in Greece that are, I think are amazing musicians and people, and I do miss them dearly, but I felt like I had a hard time doing my own thing, joining my own or joining a band or whatever that could represent what I wanted to do. And I felt like I should move. So I was already thinking about it. And then that came, that happened, and I was like, okay, well, you're not staying in Greece now. Now you have to move, wow. you know. Wow, that's a, yeah. that's a big step, actually. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's, it's not just staying kind of in Europe somewhere, but uh, the other side of the ocean, other yeah. side of the world, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow, but do you still, I mean, I guess at the moment you can maybe not go to Greece, I don't know, but... Do you go home as a back in the before Corona or I don't know? Um, I I was lucky that I planned a trip in uh, February of uh, 2020. Good yeah. timing. Yeah. yeah, I hadn't gone for like five years, to be honest, because oh, yeah. to me, going to Greece was always like, well, first of all, it costs a lot of money for plane tickets and whatnot. And yeah. I don't just want to go and spend a week, you know, a week vacation. No. That doesn't make sense. So I was always looking for a good time period that I could go and stay for a month. Um, and I was lucky because I booked a tattoo sh- session, actually, my my tattoo here, my sleeve, um, for February 2020. So Perfect. I was, yeah, so I was there when the whole crazy corona spread was happening. Mm-hmm. And I came home right before lockdown. And Oh, you just made it. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. Oi, that's good timing. You could still see your family, your friends getting a tattoo, going home before all the yeah. borders close. Yeah, <laughs> and I was so thankful for the timing because also like my, my tattoo artist, he had to, as soon as lockdown happened, he had to stop working for, for a short period of time. Yeah. So oh, yeah. imagine... Yeah, so imagine I go there and I spend mm. money on plane tickets and all that, and it's like, oh, I can't even do my tattoo. You know, yeah. I would freak yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you had everything, and then you even made it home. Perfect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, somebody is writing, moving from sunny Greece to winter cold Chicago. Uh, I guess it was quite a difference then, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's mm-hmm. it's definitely like in the beginning, it's a little bit of a shock. Like my mm-hmm. first. Because I went to Montreal first as soon as I joined the band. And I went in February, like, (laughs) super cold. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I remember (laughs) moments of, like, us standing in the cold with with the guys. I just met them, you know, and they were, like, super chill and talking. And, like, you know how people do the thing where we're in a bar or a restaurant Mm -hmm. and we're talking and we're like, okay, let's go. But then we step (laughs) outside and we keep talking. Talking, talking. Yeah. (laughs) So they would do that to me, and I would be there with my winter jacket that was a winter jacket in Greece, not proper for Montreal, and I'd be shivering, and I'm like, why are we doing this outside? We could have done this inside. <laughs> oh, no. And then yeah. did, you, did you actually get a proper winter jacket at some point? I did. I did, and my body got used to it, too, you know, so yeah, I'm okay yeah, yeah. now. Of course, yeah. you're okay now. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah. Ay, ay, ay. And talking about Greece and so on, Marilena uh, wrote, um, Vicky, how did you decide with the band to add the Greek lyric part in blood <laughs> as my guide? Hello from Greece. She's from Greece. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I've, I've, a few people have asked me this before. Um, it was just the music. Um, if, if people just isolate that, that riff happening behind the vocals and they hear it, and they're Greek. I think you kind of have to be Greek. Mm-hmm. I think you'll hear that it sounds 
like really close to what traditional Greek music sounds like at moments. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I so I heard it and I was initially just singing like vocal like ahs, oohs over it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was noticing I was doing a lot of, like, movements within, like, this, like, I, I don't know what kind of scale that you would call this, like, a, it's like a Middle Eastern style yeah. of singing or Arabic oh, cool. style. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was talking to my drummer, Simon, because he actually wrote that part. And we were like, whoa, what if we just put Greek lyrics on it, you know? And... Cool. It, it, it worked. It worked with the the music, the riff. Like I wouldn't do it if if that yeah. didn't inspire me to do it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What What is um Greek traditional singing? You mentioned something like uh, the special uh, how to say scales and so on. Um, yeah. So mm-hmm. it 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 does have elements of that Arabic style of singing. You know, a lot mm-hmm. of like. Um, I know there's a musical, this is a scale, like, uh, music Mm. theory here, but I'm not, it's like a mode, you know, there's, like, there's, there's, uh, different modes, so maybe someone here in the chat knows to tell us what mode that is, like, where you go, Mm. like, um, da 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 Wow, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. so beautiful. And do they also use some, uh, like, special vibrato or so, you know, like this Ar- Arabic style, or not really in, in Greece? I, I don't uh, really know about it that much. <laughs> yeah, so I th- I think it depends on the singer, because um, mm-hmm. there's, there's two types, at least for f- the female voices, traditional female voices in, in Greek. Mm-hmm. Um you either get the soft, sweet, uh, more high-pitched voices that have a little bit of a faster vibrato, naturally, mm-hmm. or you get those, like, big, like, low women that sing like men mm-hmm. almost, you mm-hmm. know, that mm-hmm. you feel like the microphone needs to be over ah! here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, that, and those okay. voices tend to have a bigger, wider vibrato, I think. Yeah. Super interesting. Yeah, I, I got to check it out actually a little bit. It's very, very interesting. Uh, these traditional singings uh, and everywhere is different, right? That's, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah, okay. I see a few questions now. That's actually sure. super cool, guys. Um, so, Vicky, do you collect vinyl or listen to music from doom metal bands? Oh, that's like two um, questions. Oh, yeah, <laughs> two questions. It's funny how it's phrased. It's like I'm only allowed to choose one <laughs> yeah. of the two. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, so doom metal, I would say not so much. It's not my preferred genre of music. I I tend to go for more uplifting, heavier stuff, not necessarily slower stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, just personal taste. And then in terms of vinyl, I do have a few vinyl records, but not. I wouldn't say I have a collection just yet. Probably because I don't have the source for it, you know. Yeah. So well, I'm picturing myself yeah. in the future when I have, like, my environment the way I want it. Because right now it's not at all. Like, I'm in my basement, which is also a workout room and a filming room. It's just yeah. a mess, you know. So <laughs> maybe in the future when I have, like, my forever home and I'll have, yeah. like, a dedicated space to music, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> Somebody writes Doom Vinyl, yeah. Doom <laughs> <But yeah>. Vinyl. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Matt was also asking something. Ah, here. Was there a specific band that triggered your wanting to go into metal as a career? Um, No, it wasn't a specific band. I think it was just the variety of different bands I listened to when I first discovered metal. So when I first discovered metal, it was like, you know, the classics, Iron Maiden, Metallica, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. stuff like Judas Mm -hmm. Priest. And then from, um, I guess, female singers in metal, um, the very first ones I heard was uh, from Nightwish, Tarja, uh, because this was early 2000s, right? So that that's what was big then or Lacuna Mm -hmm. Coil, Christina Scabia, Mm -hmm. um, The Gathering, Annika. Those were, I think, the the first women that were doing it in metal mm-hmm. then. So those were the first bands that I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you were also inspired by their vocals and so on. And 
Uh, mm-hmm. he, yes and no. So, like, I was, I did enjoy what I was hearing, but I, I never felt like um, I want to be in a band like Nightwish or I want to be in a band like Lacuna Coil. So it was one of those, I liked the bands, I enjoyed the music, but for myself... Mm-hmm. Um, from a musical standpoint, there were other genres of metal that I liked more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you, I mean, the agonist is super hard, right? So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Very energetic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> hey, wow. Hey, time flies. We are already here. Okay, I see. Okay, but let's say two more questions. Okay. Uh, Sure. Is it okay for you, Vicky? Okay. I'm fine. I'm good. I have time. All right. <laughs> All right. Well then. Um so, hey, uh Vicky, what are your top 3 favorite bands? Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why people one. ask. Well, because I think, you know, I think people's top bands are for like emotional reasons. They're like circumstantial. They like you happen to hear this band at a point in your life that you connected with the most. Um, mm. Mm. But does that mean that they're actually your favorite bands? Because, like, I think our tastes change as we we grow older or we discover new bands that mm-hmm. maybe if we heard those bands when we were younger, they would be our favorite bands, you know? So I think yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's what makes it hard for me. It really makes it hard for me to choose because the only bands I would mention are probably the bands that I heard when I was like between the age of 16 to 18 just because they influenced me on an emotional yeah. level so which yeah. ones would just name three it doesn't have to be your favorite now or yeah. whatever just three yeah. important bands in, uh, in your life um okay I would say Opeth uh The Gathering and Pain of Salvation probably there you go. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no. but I know what you mean. It's always so hard to choose. Uh, or what? what is your favorite song? And then, like, my, my head is black and I have no song in mind. And so yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think song is even harder. Like, how can even someone harder. have a favorite song? That doesn't make sense. There are so many out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, this is so true. Ah, oh, Laura asks, what is the first thing you're gone uh, you, you're going to do after lockdown. So um, I don't know what the band will do, whatever we decide, like tour or whatever and so on. But on a personal level, I think I'm going to go on a trip, on a vacation. Because <laughs> I have been here in this environment for over a year and I'm yeah. not used to this at all. Yeah. So I'm yeah, going on yeah, vacation. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sounds sounds good. Well, you can go on vacation to Canada. <laughs> yeah, no, not Canada. No, <laughs> no I'm going no, no. somewhere I've never been. <laughs> somewhere where it's warm, maybe. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> so there is a very long question. So Vicky, way back you did the cover with Yanni's po- <laughs> pop the. Polus of Beast in Black <laughs> before either of you got famous of Camelot's The Haunting. Do yeah. you see any collapse in the future with him? I guess we'll have to ask him. I, I wouldn't mind singing with him again. We used to sing a lot together in the past, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm I'm on board if he is. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Wow. Yeah, so many collaborations. It's very it's a very nice thing, right? Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I think so too. I think mm-hmm. I think it it's also like my personality too. I'm a bit like more introverted and shy when it comes to. Like, if I don't know someone, if I've never met someone. Mm -hmm. So, like, Mm -hmm. you, for example. Like, now I know you. Now I feel a bit more comfortable with you. But it wouldn't be in my personality if this hadn't happened to be like, hey, let me message uh, Fabi and and see what's happening. Like, I would never do that. I would, like, (laughs) the mere idea just, like, has me, like, frozen. Because that's Mm -hmm. that's just Mm -hmm. who I am. But Mm -hmm. I love doing collaborations. And when people reach out to me, I'm always like, yeah, let's do it. But yes. mm-hmm. I don't do it. I, I'm so shy that I don't reach out to mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I know uh, that's bad, mm-hmm. but whatever. <laughs> yeah, but once once you start with them, you get warm, then it's yeah. like super in the groove. And it's awesome to do more and more together, right? Uh, yeah. And I think it feels more organic that way, too. Because yeah. 
it's not, it's no longer just like a professional thing. Just mm-hmm. like, oh, you're a singer in this band and you're, and you're a singer in this other band. Let's do this because, you know, it's a professional thing. I think once you know someone and you actually talk to them on a personal level, it becomes like a friendship thing too. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, I much prefer important. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, this is so important. Not not only with collabs, but also within the band. Or so you you need to get along with the people, and you need of to course. feel comfortable. The the human aspect is so important in music. Well, everywhere basically. But within yeah. music, when you want to be creative, you need to be in an environment where you feel comfortable, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, of course. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. like I said, you're doing music, but you're not doing it the way you want to. So, are you truly happy? You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so so true. You are you are very right. There is another question uh, from Daniel. Are you doing much vocal training? Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I think everything that I've been doing since last year has been like unintentional vocal training, because mm-hmm. there's not a single day that I don't use my voice in some way, even if it's just mm-hmm. talking. Um, So it's like talking, uh, giving vocal lessons to other people. You're Mm -hmm. using your voice. You're demonstrating vocal covers, practice uh, sessions on Twitch. You know, I'm always using my voice. So I don't think I'm like intentionally doing vocal training and being like, I want to practice this specific thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's just natural. It's happening organically again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like um, practicing by doing. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's anyway the best thing. <laughs> it is. It mm-hmm. is because I think you surprise yeah. yourself too sometimes because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. not actively seeking to improve. You're just doing it. And yeah. then maybe one day you wake up and you do something that you've never done before and you're like, wow, how did that yes. happen? <laughs> yeah, that's true. And my, my singing teacher always told me, Fabi, it's okay to take a break. It's actually very good as well because your body is still digesting everything you did. And it's okay to not sing for a whole week and still after a week you may improve. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, so this is super good. Super practical Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Yeah. There's one thing I actually wanted to talk to you about. What was up with this heavy metal yoga? (laughs) It oh, sounds awesome. <laughs> that was so much fun, actually. I had no idea what it was. Um, but apparent. so it's a thing. Um, the, uh, what was her name? It's Saskia, I think. Again, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's mm-hmm. German. She does it at Wacken, apparently, every year and other metal festivals. And it's literally just a, yo- a yoga routine along to heavy music. So she'll make playlists and so she did one for, I gave her some Agonist songs and she created a, a 45 minute like yoga session on our music. And so I've done yoga before. So I know like the basic moves. Uh-huh. So I could tell how her course was like, what was traditional and what wasn't, so to speak. So what she'll do is like a mix of taking a classic yoga pose and introducing some like fun metal elements to it. Cool. So... So what happens is you don't realize that you're doing yoga for that amount of time, like 45 minutes passed. And I was like, really? I was doing yoga for 45 minutes. Oh, really? Um, Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Because she has you doing like some cool moves. Like, for example, every time you stretch, instead of just like stretching your arm out, she'll have you like do the horns. Do this. Always. (laughs) This is awesome. Seriously. Ah, Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I love that. (laughs) There'll be like, there'll be like movements with like, um, weapons, for example. So she's like, like now she's like, now you, you're holding the sword and you're about to like give someone the final blow, for example. So you're standing in a position like this all the way up and then she'll have you squat down and and deliver the final blow so it's like oh you're doing exercise but it's fun (laughs) but it's fun yeah hey this actually sounds super awesome does she do that via twitch too or something or uh no it's it's through zoom sessions i believe right now um so anyone Mm -hmm. can sign up and i think it's um donation based so because it is her job it is her work but she doesn't charge people up front so like everyone's invited but 
you know, please tip tip your yoga instructor, you know. Wow, this is so cool. Somebody uh, tagged Metal Yoga Bones. That's maybe her page or so. Uh, so that's our mutual friend that invited me to do that. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Hey, this is so awesome. I was like, wait, Metal Yoga? But I heard about it before. Now when you said that she does it at uh, Wacken. So yeah. I, it, it must be there where I heard it. Or I wonder if... If it maybe was on, do you know, 70,000 tons of metal, maybe it was there as well. I could imagine, maybe. I, Unf- I'm not sure yeah. if it was there. Uh, unfortunately, too. it wasn't there because I did ask her about that during uh, the the um, session. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, like, it's like um, a huge issue with, like, liability and stuff like that. I think because you're on a cruise or something, like, uh-huh. in case someone gets injured or whatever. So she's never oh. been able to do it there. Oh, um okay but she's done it on other other european metal festivals so i'm i'm sure yeah. you know you heard about it from somewhere you know wow okay this is this is so cool actually yeah because yeah. I, I remember on seventy thousand tons of metal that's why i thought maybe there's also metal yoga because in the morning you eat breakfast and there is you know it's from morning until evening metal 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 and yes. it's so amazing so i thought okay if there is somewhere metal yoga i must be there but yeah okay with all this yeah. uh, security stuff and so on then <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hey, well, no, wow, it was cool. a lot of fun though so i do mm-hmm. recommend if anyone's curious or interested check it out because it was so much fun Ah, so you you joined on the camera and you did with with her together via Zoom or yeah. So everyone yeah. joins in. I think there were like twenty twenty five people. I don't remember exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're shy, you could turn off your camera. I um I turned off my camera not because I was shy, but because I don't have the space to do it here where my camera is. So you uh-huh. wouldn't be able to see me anyways. Uh-huh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I did yeah, it. Yeah. I did this because I was like, you know, she she just made a yoga routine to our music. Of course, I'm yeah, going to do it. You of know, <laughs> yeah, this is so cool. This idea. I really like it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you enjoy yeah. it with the horns and yeah. doing the final? <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. yeah. yeah this is super cool. Wow. That's very, very uh, unique, I would say. Uh, yeah. I guess she's one of the only ones doing this. It's a cool idea, actually. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's a good, uh, like, you know, I guess I guess you do some heavy workouts. Uh, you said something with weightlifting and so on. So I guess yoga yeah. is a very nice balance then to it. Yeah, I would say yoga is like easier in comparison, but mm-hmm. it's a different type of workout. Because mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. just because you lift weights, it doesn't mean you can do yoga. You know, mm-hmm. it has other difficulties, mm-hmm. like, you mm-hmm. know, balancing yourself and, yeah. you know, um, I just, I prefer lifting weights because I, I don't like cardio too much. I hate cardio, but I still do it cause I have to. Um, but I like lifting weights because I think, especially as a woman, it's very empowering to yeah. see your, your strength grow over time. And you're like, wow, I can actually lift, you know, this and that. And it, 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 to me, at least I get, a, I, I get a really good feeling after yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, and I mean, always sitting in front of computer or in the basement and doing, you know, it's a good uh, balance to yeah. to actually move. <laughs> yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so important. <laughs> hey, and Vicky, is there something that you want to tell us what is going to happen, so something important for, for the end of this talk? Uh, anything to announce um, or so? Or your next okay. Twitch session? <laughs> so, I mean, Twitch is tomorrow again. So every Tuesday, mm-hmm. Thursday at 2 p.m. Central Time. Mm-hmm. Um, important. I would say just like this year, there's a lot happening, a lot coming from me, like in terms of like my own personal uh, like all the stuff we mentioned that I do, plus like new agonist music towards the end of the year. I also mm-hmm. have another project um, with a, a new band that um, we recorded. Uh, when was it? Oh, after the Ginger Tour. So end of 2019, we recorded mm-hmm. a new album mm-hmm. that hasn't been released. Uh, so okay. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, because mm-hmm. we were planning on recording it and then filming videos and stuff like that but then the pandemic happened 
And then it's like you don't want to launch a brand new band and project and all this without a music video. Like, that would be stupid. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so we left it standby. So that's going to pick up again this year, hopefully. So hopefully I can post. Yeah. 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 Hey, there's a lot going on from from your side. Yeah. 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 It's a lot. But I think at the end of the day, it's all me. You know, going back to our discussion, like, I think when it comes to music, you have to do the things that make you happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure you can relate to this with, like, some of the covers that you've been doing. You know, they're not they're not songs like how Eluvati is, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. they're different genres, different styles. And I'm sure it's music you enjoyed and you wanted to cover as an individual artist. So Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. I think when you have these like influences and this the style of music that you enjoy, you should be able to do it. And if you can't do it in your band because your band has a certain sound that you want don't want to take away from, yeah, you do it elsewhere. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just to have all the facets somehow that you can live it. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. But then, so we are looking forward for a lot of material from you. And in three weeks, you go and record some vocals yeah. for The Agonist and so yeah. on. Yeah. So I Super already wish exciting. you a creative <laughs> and wonderful time then, of course, in the studio. Super Thank cool. you. Thank yeah. you so much. Well, yeah, yeah this, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was yeah. a lot of fun. And like, uh, I don't know if people know, but we don't actually know each other. So this is no. us. <laughs> Getting to know each other, I guess. <laughs> exactly, exactly. First time talking and with you guys. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> yeah, Everybody thanks a lot, here. everyone. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That was lovely. Thank you for spending this evening with us. And I would say we will end this, this live stream here then. Um, good night, sure. everybody, or good afternoon. And uh, take <laughs> care and see you for the next episode then. <laughs> Absolutely. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye-bye.